gosh, I forgot. Thank you. Hi, everyone. He just went like this, and I had forgotten to push the record button. I don't know where my mind is today, but it's it's on the topic that I'm going to be doing. But hi, everyone. I'm Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Today I had a couple things I wanted to talk about, and I guess that's what I'm thinking about at the moment and forgot the button. But the kids were here today. They got off the bus. They had a half day of school. I don't know why they had a half day of school. Maybe it's Superintendent's Day or something. I don't know. But um, the kids came and I cooked their lunch for them. Now they have a couple choices when they come to my house. It's either going to be some kind of pasta or it's going to be eggs. And I decided I would do the pasta today because they do like hot dogs too. Now I've got a little dish of it left over that I'll show you because I've had others ask me when I've mentioned it before, what is hot dog stew? Well, I hope you can, they can see it. It is really macaroni with kidney beans, hot dogs, a little tomato sauce, green beans. Oh, that's okay. No, I don't need the spoon. I'm good. But thank you. They, they saw it. Good enough. And this was a favorite of all the kids in the daycare, which is what I'm going to talk about today is the daycare. The I don't... Beans, are they all oh, whole beans? No, or? I ground them up. I, I grind them up. I can leave them whole, but I grind them up. The kids like them ground up. Then they, they just see the little specks of, of skin from the kidney beans, and I tell them it's probably hot dog pieces when they are first learning to like this because... When kids see kidney beans, they don't want those beans. They'll tell you right out. They say, I don't want those beans. And I say, that's okay. I won't put them in. Well, they're ground up so they don't know that they're really in. And they love it. And then I put a little bit of Romano um, cheese on top. And, um, they, and the older kids would put a little chili powder on it. So we called it Chili Willy Soup or Hot Dog Stew. So oh, there's two names. there's two names, yeah. Well, the Chili Willy usually had the hamburger, and this one has the hot dogs. So, but they're made pretty much the same. All right, now the daycare. What I wanted to talk about is I was talking on one of my comments. I don't remember which one, but um, I had talked about my daycare, and it was I run ran it different than a lot of daycares. Now my daycare. Um, I don't run it anymore, but I did have a group family daycare. I was one of 10 daycares in our county. Now the other nine were in the, the south end of the county. Our county is really big where they've divided it into two sections. We have the north end and the south end. And I was the, I was how, the. Well, how far is it to the south end? It's over, it's about 36 miles to get there at least. So it gives them an idea how big it's, it's the big. Is. It takes it takes um, a half an hour, a good half an hour, to get to the other side of the county. So um, I ran a daycare, and I was the only daycare on this end of the county. Now there's more daycares. There were a lot of babysitters, but there were really no daycares. And so the, what I did different was I'm going to look at mine. And the reason it came up is because someone on my other video noticed. I think it was Marnie. Marnie, yeah. Um, she she noticed there was plastic art. Well, when I had the daycare, I actually taught the kids how to, to sew. They did embroidery. They did plastic art. I taught some how to crochet, and there was some of them that learned to knit. Um, so there was a lot of things that was going on in the daycare. Beating. that. Pardon me? You did some beading bracelets? Be yeah, we did that. We did... Um, we did a lot of things that they don't do in daycares, but I felt that my daycare should be a well-rounded daycare, and that it was. We not only did the academic things, such as the ABCs and colors and numbers, we also did um, music therapy. Now, a lot of people pay to go to music therapy for their re really young children and for the very old. They found that music therapy helps the brain to stay strong and connect. So what I did is, we, when we did Story Hour, we did two things with music. We did the music therapy where they would come to the piano and I would play the piano. I'm not real good at the piano. In fact, I gave my piano away. I can't even 
play it now because I gave it away to my grandchildren. I figured they need it while it's young. But when we would read a story, to keep their attention, I gave them all an instrument. So that when, and they were all designated a word that they were supposed to um, rattle their instrument by. Now the stories usually were something that would teach a lesson, the kind of stories I read. Um, and so when they heard their word, they had to shake their instrument. And it got to the point where some of the kids would say, nudge them and say, hey, that's your word. And then they go, oh yeah. And then, so they would pay attention so that they would not be daydreaming while a story was being read. But the music therapy part was we would get the instruments out and they would learn rhythm. And I would do the, the I would get the guitar out and the ukuleles because I have more than, and I have a beginner guitar for the children to play with. I had my guitar and then I had the beginner guitar and then I had ukuleles and, and percussion instruments and bells and cymbals and woodblock and, and the rhythm sticks the flutophones. The flutophones. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff. Bells. There was a lot of things that they could ring. And so if you came into my house and if you didn't like noise, you were in for some real sound. Um, I also did balance for large motor skills. Now, in my when I was working at the school, they were not allowed to do this, which really surprised me. I used to set up the chairs. They're just little kid chairs, and I would have I would hang onto their hand and let them walk across the chairs and jump off. Well, I went to do that at the school, and they said, "Oh, we can't do that. That's dangerous." And I'm thinking, they're never gonna. They're these kids are being so overprotected with fear of danger that they're I don't know what they're learning. It makes it hard. And then fine motor skills would be where we'd have them string the beads. And I would actually make paper beads for the kids. And they would help make paper, paper beads if they were older, old enough. I remember um, when they were finger painting, I had some foster children that had never in their life ever finger painted. And so they all... How old were they? Oh, they were like 15 or 16 years old. And they, they would have never finger painted if it wasn't for the fact that the daycare children were finger painting. And so I would tell them that they could show the other kids how to do it. And so they got to experience a part of um, growing up that they didn't get a chance to do. And it was really sad in a way that they had not ever finger painted, but they got to experience it. And they got to play with Play-Doh because the, I would make Play-Doh for the kids and they would get to play with it and make things and paint. And then we did sun catchers. If you have the colored glue, the Elmer's glue, you can make the most beautiful sun catchers. What you do is you put them on a piece of, I used to have yogurt containers that had a plastic cover. And the plastic cover is what we used to put the um, glue on and then you let it sit for a few days and as it's dry you can see it drying because the cover was kind of opaque and you could sort of see through it and when the glue was dry where you could peel it off the cover you could put it on your windows and you had sun um, catchers that were made out of colored glue it was really a fun time for all the kids my when the kids went for kindergarten screening they re there was no um, pre-k's at the time there was just the paid preschool where for, uh, our, our kids. for our kids and and the kids that when were in my daycare, daycare when I ran the daycare there was not a pre-k there was just the paid preschools and a lot of parents couldn't take their children there because it was a two and a half hour program and if they're at work they can't get out of work to come pick up their child or bring them there so they came to my daycare and when they went for kindergarten screening a lot of the teachers were really just amazed at the ability of these kids because they were well well beyond what they were expected to know and it was all because of my daycare so i guess i should have been a teacher years ago if i'd have been a teacher i could have avoided all this um, recertification stuff that the teachers have to do today I never realized there was so much involved in 
continuing to be a teacher that they they um you can get your certification for teachers and then in a few years you have to take a little bit more um class of some sort to get to keep your certifications where I would have been grandfathered in because it was a long time ago that I got out of school and when I was in school there was a lot of teachers that were not married and it was because there were, it was a rule that teachers couldn't be married female I teachers. female teachers male teachers could be yeah male teachers could be married now that tells you that the world was not very fair but I had a lot of single teachers and because they were single, they treated us as their children, and they really had um, good concern. But then I had a few that were married, like the fourth grade teacher that was married that wasn't very nice. But my sixth grade teacher was really nice. In fact, she had me a second year. She wanted to show that I was a lot smarter than I had begun to believe I was because my spirit had been broken in fourth grade and she wanted to build it back up and sure enough I could not believe when she would call my name that I got the highest grade in the class that day or that subject or whatever it was it was really a great experience I had forgotten to put that in my other video but it's in this one now so if you've heard the other one you heard this one you're good I guess that's it for today. I think that was all I wanted to say. Your chickens? Oh, yeah. I forgot my chickens. <laughs> I'm going to show you a little tiny video of me locking my chickens in. It's something I have to do if I let them out. They wanted out today, and there really, really wasn't a lot of um, area for them to go. But they still wanted out, so I let them out, and then I have to lock them in. And my brown girl... She was lingering and lingering and lingering. Finally, she went in, and when she went in, then I was able to lock it up. But it was pretty dark by the time she went in, so I'll share that with you. And I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Every night that I let the chickens out, I've got to let them back in. So I'm going out into the dark. Pretty dark out here. We gotta lock them in. Can you see anything? I think you can. I can see. Hmm. They're, whoops. I'm taking the dog leash thing with me. Whoa. I gotta get myself untangled. This is not good. Okay. Good night, girls. Everybody's in. That hook up, and then I lock. I do a double lock and lock them in there, and that's how it goes. And then we go back into the house. This is why I'm so glad that they're so close to the to the house. And we'll go back in.